if there's our logic function we can double click on the if or add the brackets shift nine here's our logic box so here's our arguments down here we're on the logic test being the first argument where we're going to say that we want if this number is equal to the number one in our box over here then when i say then i put a comma if that test is true what do you want us to do that's the next value if it's true we want you to put a heads next to it if it's true and then comma if it's false what if it's not true what do you want us to do we want you to put a tails so once again first test if this number equals one next part we want you to to then put a heads in it next part if it's not equal to one put a tails in it and if i hit enter it puts a tails now I'd like to copy that down. I'm gonna double click on it. I can't copy it down as if because, because these cells will shift down. I want this cell to shift down. I don't want these cells to shift down. So anything that's outside of the current uh, range I'm working in, I need to tell Excel, don't shift it down. So for, for example, this one's in uh, D1. So I'll put my cursor in D1. Now the way you do this is one way is you could just select F4 on the keyboard it puts a dollar sign before the D and a dollar sign before the one. Those are the two variables locating our cell on the two dimensional screen, right? We've got, we've got D one. So it's saying that dollar signs have nothing to do with dollars. It's just telling Excel when I pull this down, don't change the D or the one keep the cell exactly the way it is. That's called an absolute reference. And you only need a mixed reference, by the way, but uh, an absolute will work here. So I'm going to use that. And then over here, we've got the tail, uh, the, the, the tails. So that's on C1. So same thing here. I'm going to put my cursor in there. F4 dollar sign before the C and the one and C2. Also, uh, we don't want it to move F4. So now these are all absolute cell references, except for this one, F2, because I do want that one to move down. So let's hit enter. I'll show you what I mean. I put my cursor on this, put my cursor on the fill handle. Let's drag it down to the number one, where it should show us the heads. If I double click on it, there's the references. Didn't change that cell, didn't change that cell, didn't change that cell, did change this cell, because now we moved that down to four, whereas here it was at a number two. Then if I just put my cursor on this one and double click it, it'll go all the way, it'll go all the way down. So there we've, we've got it all the way down and we could say these are our results for our first test. I could make it into a table if I want now, go into the insert tab, tables and insert a table and say I want to uh, add the table. And then we could look at our results and we could look at them uh, this way. You know, I could show the results from Z to A and put all my heads and all my tails, which might give me an idea. I can count where the middle point is. And then of course, what we would want to do is get the percentage that's gonna be heads versus the percentage that's going to be tails. So let's make a skinny H over here. And, and so this is basically our sample that we took now. We took a sample of the population, which in theory is infinite number of flips, which we know in theory, if you did an infinite number of flips would come out 50-50, but we just did a sample of 100. So now we can count the heads and count the tails. So let's say we've got heads, uh, tails, and We'll, we'll do a count function here. So I could, I could say, I could do it this way. We were going to say equals count if, count if brackets, we only need one condition. So I'm going to say count if, I'm going to pick up the range. Now I could do either range doing this with numbers or doing this with, uh, with uh, the, the non-numerical value. So let's just do the heads here. So I'm going to say count them uh, if that uh, range comma, has a criteria, what's the criteria? That it's just simply going to be heads. So count them if they are heads. And then enter, so there's 52. Now I know if there's 52 out of 100, I could say 100 minus 52, or it would be better for me to give me a double check to do the same thing here, equals count if brackets, the range, so there's the range, comma, the criteria, if it's a tails and then closing that up and enter. 
and then I'll pick up the total and the total equals the sum of these two so there we have it and I only have 99 so notice I don't exactly have a hundred apparently I didn't count it out properly because I stopped at 100 I missed that first cell so there's only out of 99 now actually I think that's actually good because notice if it was out of 100 we could see here that that would be representing 52 percent versus 49 percent but the fact that we always use round numbers in these practice problems lead can kind of lead to confusion because what we're really doing uh, is saying I'm taking the 52 heads out of the total number of flips which there was only 99 in this case so that means to get a percent let's put an underline here font group and underline i can get a percent by taking equals the heads divided by the total which is not 100 but only 99. so it's not 52 percent uh we've got a number one i need to make that to a percent home tab numbers i'm going to make it a percent add a couple decimals just to make it a little bit more exact so it's real so it, so it's 52 uh uh, 53 right so and this is going to be equal to 49 divided by 100 let's and then this one is simply going to be equal to this divided by itself or 100 percent or in other words i could sum up these which will be 100 and then let's format this one i'm going to use the format painter this time to format these two the exact same formatting home tab clipboard format painter and then paint brushy these two and so it's the same formatting i'll underline it here home tab uh uh font and underline so we can see that it didn't come out exactly even though i did a pretty fair amount of flips 100 or 99 <laughs> flips but it's still uh 52 heads and tails 47 so if i was to judge this i can't i can't really say well it's unfair on heads side based on this result because you know statistically speaking it's quite possible that i flip it 100 times and that's pretty close to 50 50 right so I, i'm still going to assume the null assumption that the coin is innocent it's not fair i mean it is fair unless i get a preponderance of evidence that's going to prove to me otherwise and so that's kind of the general idea let's go to the home tab font group put some brackets and make this one blue Okay, I'm going to I'm going to try to make all these skinnies the same skinny size. I put my cursor on B. E, I'm holding down control E, holding control H, and then I'm going to make them the same skinny size so they're kind of uniform. And then so so now let's copy this number H. I'm going to go to the home tab, clipboard and and format paint the skinny and then skinnyize the L uh, the L over here. So now let's just do another test just to play with our numbers here. And let's say that we did uh, like like 15 of, of the one to 15 flips. And let's say that we did a sample of just one, one flip up to 15 flips and see you know, what, the, you know, what the differences are or two flips up to 15 flips. So let's say we say the number, number of flips is gonna be one and then two and let's bring it up to 15. I'm going to put my cursor on this one and bring it up to uh, 15. And so then I'll center this one. And then let's just add our tests. So this is going to be test, uh, test one, and then I'll put test two and so on up top. And then I'm just going to use my random my random between one and two again so random or equals rand uh rand between double click the between one comma two so one's head and two is tails is what what we're standing what it stands for again so i'm just going to hit enter and so i get i'm going to put my cursor on that one and fill handle it down so on the first test i'm going to say we flip it just uh two uh times and then I'm going to put my cursor here and copy it to the right. And then I'm going to copy this one down. So I'm going to imagine we flipped it three times this time. And then I'm going to and notice all of those came out to one on this one random test. So 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 with three flips, that's quite, you know, that's quite possible. If I've copied it over again and then I uh, pull these down, we're going to imagine we flip it four times. And then I'm going to copy these to the right. 
and then pull, oh, hold on a sec, and then pull these down. We're gonna flip it five times, copy these to the right, and flip it uh, six times, copy these to the right. Imagine that we flip it seven times, copy these to the right. I'm gonna pull this over a bit. Imagine that we flip it eight times, copy these to the right, and then imagine that we flip it nine times and then copy these to the right and imagine that we flip it 10 times. I'll do it this way so I can copy it to the right easy. 10 times, copy to the right and then we're gonna imagine that we flip it 11 times, copy to the 